Greetings, welcome um, to another talk in our series on um, Wikisite and uh, opportunities for libraries. Um, I want to uh, welcome you and I also want to just take a moment to acknowledge that I'm um, currently coming to you from uh, land that is um, held by the uh, Mississaugas of the Credit uh, First Nation and also has been occupied by many Indigenous nations including the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe and the Huron-Wendat. And I want to also acknowledge that um, the territories through which we are all meeting, although uh, in a virtual space, we are all occupying physical territory, as well as the cables and servers um, that our information flows from and through. And I just want you all to take a moment to consider uh, the occupation and history of occupation of the lands that we are on. Um, I wanna take a moment also to thank uh, IFLA, um, the Wikisite Project and the Wikimedia Foundation for funding to uh, provide this series of talks. And this talk, these talks are organized by the IFLA Wikidata Working Group. And this working group was formed in late 2019 to consider opportunities for libraries uh, to do work within Wikidata, Wikibase, and the Wikimedia projects. Today, we are joined by Ahava Cohen, who is head of the Hebrew Cataloging Department at the National Library of Israel, an active member of the Wikidata community. And she's going to be talking to us uh, today about work that she has been doing um, on uh, Wikidata. And her talk is entitled, Mind the Gap, How Wikidata Complements uh, and Completes Metadata Work. And I'm gonna turn it over to her. Hi, I'm Ahava Cohen. Before I start talking about what I do with Wikidata, I need to set the stage a little because the Israeli library world is slightly different than most library worlds in that, particularly in the cataloging and metadata area, unlike most libraries that deal with their national language or predominant language, in Israel we have four languages that the library world works in. We work in Arabic for all resources in Arabic characters. We work in Russian for all resources in Cyrillic characters. We work in English for most European, African, Asian languages and American languages. And we work in Hebrew for anything that's in Hebrew characters, which includes obviously Hebrew, Yiddish, Ladino, Judeo-German, Judeo-Italian, all sorts of different varieties of Judeo-Arabic, etc. And that makes life very challenging in our country, which is why I'm the head of Hebrew cataloging. At the National Library of Israel, we have three different cataloging departments because we don't expect any one person to be able to handle all the different languages and all the different scripts. And that's actually how I got into Wikidata in the first place. While I started to work with metadata, I realized that most of the standards and most of the systems we were working on were built for a European American, Western Christian, Anglo bias and there weren't very many opportunities for us to put in our information. If we could, most worldwide standards said, oh, you can put in all the information you want in Hebrew, sweetheart. Only you've got to do it in Latin characters because who can read your language? Oh, well, a few million people and historically over the course of the last millennia, major amounts of the world could Harvard, when it started, taught Hebrew. It's a legitimate language, and yet we had no standing. In WorldCat, we are consistently in the top 10 languages of resources cataloged, but you gotta do it in Latin characters, which is not the character set that's used in Hebrew. It's not even in the same direction. I mean, you guys in the rest of the world, or most of you go left to right, we go right to left. 
And that feeling that the world looked at us like, you're really important, but only if you fit into the mold that we want you to fit into, led me to look for a place that was doing the sort of things that we started to do in the National Library, which was work on completely seamless, multilingual, multi-script metadata work. We have a project here in Israel where if you have a person's name in a library catalog, you can search in Hebrew and English and Arabic or in Russian, and you'll get everything that person ever wrote that's collected by a library. And I was looking for a place in the bigger world, in the rest of the universe, or at least our planet, that would allow me to do the same thing, that would allow me to contribute the material that we were collecting in the scripts and in the languages that we were collecting it and not forcing me to work in an Anglo-Christian Western context. And that's why we started to work with Wikidata. Another reason that we started to work with Wikidata is for the same reason I got into librarianship. I am a nosy person. I like digging up information. And in the li Israeli library world, we work within Mark 21. The, a large part of my work is authority work. And there's just not room to park all this great information you find about people. And yet it's information that's important. Who is the person's parents? Who are the person's children? Where'd they go to school? None of that is relevant in the context of Mark 21 authority data. But in the Israeli library world, and particularly in the Hebrew cataloging world, it's super important information. Jews traditionally have naming structures that lead to a lot of duplication. You honor your grandparents, depending on which community of Jews you come from, either by naming your child after them while they're alive, while the grandparent is still alive, or for the more Western Jews, after someone has died, you honor them by naming your children after them, which means that even a name like mine, which is an unusual first name, there are, I know of three other women with my name in the country. And when you get more common names, you could end up with five people in the same family with the exact same name. And we use all sorts of information that there's no place, neither in the cataloging guidelines of RDA, nor in Mark 21 authority information to park that information, and we need that. So it's stuff that we collect. In our author questionnaires, we ask what, um, we ask, what tribe you come from, who your parents are, what other connections you have. And we had to find ways to shoehorn it. And I was looking for a place where we could put that information in a more structured way in the hopes that when either Mark 21 catches up to the rest of the world's needs or another system of coding replaces it, we would be able to ingest that information in a structured way instead of having to hand code it into the right places. The problem I found in Wikidata is, like I said, I'm nosy. I dig for a lot of information. And National Library of Israel is different from most national libraries because we make it a policy to collect self-published material. Our national library, our mandatory deposit law says that we have to collect everything that comes out in 50 copies or more. It doesn't say it has to be from a commercial publisher. So we get fanzines, we get people who write about their grandparents, we get someone who's put out a cookbook for her extended family, and there's a lot of information we gather on these people. And the question, and Wikidata allows me to put all this information in, and then the question is, should I? Another thing in Israel is, it's what's called a low power distance community or culture, in that it doesn't take very many steps to get from one person to any other person in the country. So we can find out information about everyone. Just ask one other person, go, oh, sure, I know him. I went to school with him. He used to do this and that, and his ex-wife is this, and 
is ex-husband is that? Do I put all that information in Wikidata or not? That's pretty much part of the background of how I got into Wikidata. The other half is once you decide Wikimedia is a great place for me, it gives me lots of opportunities that traditional library systems don't give me. Why not Wikipedia? Why Wikidata? And the answer in here, I should probably be whispering because it's not polite, but the Israeli Wikipedia community is known as a shark tank. And as you might hear from my, from my accent, I'm not a native Israeli. And my Hebrew is really good, but it's not perfect. I make grammatical errors. And I was just terrified of writing a Wikipedia entry and have all the Wikipedians in Israel come crashing down on my head saying, you have one masculine verb where it should be feminine. We're going to erase your entire entry. And what I realized and what I teach people when I teach about Wikidata is that the entrance level, the requirements that you need to start working in Wikidata are so much lower because it's got a great search engine for properties. And all you need to know is I've got a bit of metadata. This metadata is a Library of Congress number. This metadata is the name of the person's father. And once you can make that small connection, you can already get into editing Wikidata. So I was like, yay, low entrance requirements, great place to store information, multilingual, multi-script, doesn't give me any issues like this. Ooh, I found heaven. And that's when I started pushing Wikidata at the National Library of Israel. We have a few different levels at which we start working with Wikidata. One, which is our everyday thing, is working with our um, authority data. One of our big problems with authority data is that the outside world, as I said, does not like Hebrew script. Here we have an American and authority record in OCLC for a person who happens to be like me and former American living in Israel. And if you can read the encoding, they took transliteration for the person's name, even though the variant is the way the man writes his name. It's what's on his American passport. This is the sort of work we do all the time. We import these sort of records and then we correct them in our system to honor the person's own choice. Anytime we go into Wikidata to make that correction, because we're not gonna correct it in OCLC. We're not gonna be that sort of guest that rearranges someone else's cupboards. We take the information into our system, we fix it in our system, but we also fix it in Wikidata because that's a place where we can honor the person's own requests. And we know that because of projects that are happening in the United States and England, that information is going to get re-ingested into their systems. So it's our backdoor way of correcting things that they do. Anytime we go into Wikidata to get information that's missing from an OCLC record or missing from the information that we can gather, we have a policy. Be a good citizen. If you take something, put something else back. Don't leave the cupboard bare because if you leave the cupboard bare and you only take from Wikidata, eventually everyone else is going to start stop contributing to it. So we keep pretty good statistics of how many pieces of information we've copied out of Wikidata. And at the end of the month, we try to make sure we have a positive balance. I know my, my balance as of July is I've taken three pieces of data and I've contributed 50. So I'm pretty good for if I'm busy next week, I can give myself a little bit of leeway. Another thing that we do is uh, add in Wikidata identifiers into our authority records 
because we contribute to VIAF, to the Virtual International Authority file. What VIAF does is it tries to cluster together the name authority record in each of these different libraries so that if you search for one person, you can find their authority record in Israel, in America, in Wales, in Poland. The problem is that they don't always have Latin character sets, so it's not so easy for a computer to understand it. The more information that can be given to VF, the easier it is for VF to cluster all of that information. Once we give VF not only the name of the person in Hebrew or Arabic or in Cyrillic, but also the VF entity number, then they can say for sure, if Library of Congress has put this, ent via this Wikidata identity num entity number in their record, and National Library of Israel put that same Wikidata entity ID into their record, then that must be the same person. And because the Israelis also have Arabic, then we can take the Lebanese National Library that has that same heading and say, it must be the same person as, Na as National Library of Israel and Library of Congress. Oh, and it also has the Russian in National Library of Israel. So we can take any of the Cyrillic character authority headings and group them all together. It sounds like it's just good citizenship, but it's really selfish because once a month, we take all of the information from VF and we try to improve the quality of our authority records. The more certain the matches are, the more automatic work that we can do and the less we need to have an actual human librarian go over the lists. So I'm being a good citizen by donating to Wikidata, which then gets linked up to VF, which in the end benefits me. So I guess I'm not that good a citizen and I'm really a very selfish person, but you know what? It works and everyone benefits, so I'm good with it. Um, the second project that we do is we're currently in the National Library in the year of Wikimedia. We have a grant this year to do work in Wikipedia, in Wikicommons, and we snuck in a little work in Wikidata. One, our big project right now is we've just uploaded slightly more than 24,000 photos that the National Library was granted copyright on from the person who had created them. And we were allowed by the creator, Dan Hadani, to open them up as um, public domain. We've uploaded them, but as you can see here, the titles are not very good. And even within the collection itself that we have in our library, the titles aren't very good because what they would do is they would start a roll of film, the photographers, and say, okay, I am going to go see the opening of the National Theater Company. And the entire roll of the film would be called that, but if they came across a demonstration on the way to the opening of the National Theater Company, the picture would still be titled the opening of the National Theater Company, even though you see burning tires. We've been trying to improve the metadata on these pictures, and an important part of that is using the structured data in Wikicommons. The structured data in Wikicommons requires a Wikidata entity. We want to improve the Wikidata entity, which means that we need to have the link with our authority file. So it all becomes this very circular thing where our collections go into Wikicommons, our authority data goes into Wikidata, we try to create that connection and hopefully eventually we'll be able to bring back into our catalog the improvements that people have contributed into Wikicommons and Wikidata. What we're doing right now is going through these pictures. Volunteers, I'm doing it. I do it every evening as my hobby. Go in, see who's in there, make sure that they're in the structured data as it depicts, make sure that there's a Wikidata entity for them, make sure that Wikidata entity is mutually linked into our authority file by having our authority ID as a statement in Wikidata and having the Wikidata entity 
number in our authority file. And on the way, I report all of that information to our archive department, and then they can correct the material in our library. So we have better access in Wiki Commons, better access in the National Library of Israel catalog, We've even started creating authority records that we never had or never felt we needed in order for there to be a National Library of Israel identifier that we can put into Wikidata. Because this is a National Library of Israel collection. There's no reason why any of these people who are known shouldn't link back into the National Library of Israel's catalog where these pictures are hosted natively. Um, another project that we started to do with IFLA, but with the, with the cataloging section, is creating a list of the anonymous classics of the Jewish tradition. Because just like they have a Names of Persons project, they're also working on a anonymous classics project. And what we've started to do is we've taken our authority data, the name you see on one side, the beginning of the screen, beginning of the screen in Hebrew, on the right side of the screen is the Hebrew name. The next column is the name either in English or in transliteration. We have two sets of system numbers because of Wikidata at this point only accepts nine digits for our identifiers. So we keep porting it over into a nine digit system our authority number for real in our system, Library of Congress's number, Wikidata's number, and VIAF's number. And there's one that does not have a Wikidata entity, so that's something that will go back at the end of the project and create Wikidata entities for all of the anonymous classics in the Jewish tradition, which then means that if people want to write Wikipedia articles about it, they'll have the metadata ready and waiting for them. It's our contribution to the world, but again, it will help VIAF disambiguate and cluster properly, so in the end it serves us as well as it serves anyone else. Another project that we're working on, and this is a really long-term project, is taking information that was siloed by us and making it available to the rest of the world. This looks super super, super messy. And you know what? In real life, it's messier than this. This is the Israeli Publishers Database. It, is, it was built as a tool for the Mandatory Deposit Department in the National Library of Israel to know who to contact to get books. But since then, researchers and scholars and digital humanities people have been using this information in their research. It used to be in our old system in Aleph that it was a separate authority file. And it was a good thing because as you can see, the information is a mess. It would never hold up to a normal Mark 21 environment. When we moved over to Alma, you're only allowed one authority database. So we had to decide, are we gonna normalize this and bring it into the regular authority database or are we gonna dump it? Because our mandatory deposit department no longer maintains it or uses it. It's a historic database, it's not updated. We realized that we could build authority records, but we would never use authority records because we would never in a bibliographic record encode the publisher in a 110 or a 710, only if they were the subject of a work, in which case, yeah, we'll build them an authority record. But it wasn't worth the time to encode thousands of records into our authority database that would never get used in a bibliographic record. Where do you put information that you want the rest of the world to use but you don't need yourself? Where do you put that metadata? Wikidata. We're now in the process of putting this into OpenRefine. We've already done the reconciliation against and here's where there's a little bit of an issue with the multilingualism of Wikidata. We had to reconcile it four different times because you have to reconcile it separately against the English API, the Russian API, the Arabic API, and the Hebrew API. 
we've run the reconciliations against the English and the Hebrew APIs. We're currently working on making sure all the Arabic metadata is in good shape, and then we'll run the reconciliation against the Wikidata Arabic API. And there's a little bit of Russian, and that's the last part that we'll do. I have a sample here of, from all of that mess, this is a Wikidata entity that we built, which is for Hakursa publishers in Givatayim. It's, this is only the tip of the iceberg. It's got a lot more information further down. When we were working on this, we then also built an entity for the founder and, and chair of Hakursa. And eventually when we start building Wikipedia entries, she'll be one of the first people that we'll build for because we're actively trying to promote creation of Wikipedia entries for women who are of encyclopedia interest. And here we have a woman who founded a publishing house that's very successful. So we'll build a Wikipedia ent entry for her and we already have all the metadata stored that we built when we created the, author the entity for her publishing house. And this is, I just have to slip in a really, a plug for my favorite, favorite, favorite Wikidata tool, which is Recoin. Every time I go into a Wikidata page, once I activated Recoin, I just go in and see what, it, what does Wikidata think I'm missing? And when I get to the point where there are things that are very, very slight, I, I, I try to get everything under 25%. Here I have to, have to see what I can do about legal form, but I try to have every Wikidata entry entity that I work on. Recoin doesn't find anything missing that is of more than 25% relevance. And then I'm like, yay, I've done a good job. This is good, solid metadata. This is useful. This is, will help people. And I can go on to the next entity that I'm building. Um, there are also some other projects that we're working on that we're using Wikidata extensively for. In Israel, for a long time, there was that same bias that I said that there was in the Israeli library world, where if you published in Hebrew or in Arabic, it wasn't considered as important as if you published in English, because then the rest of the world can read what you're doing. And recently, the Israeli academic world said, wait, what are we, who are we publishing for? Are we publishing so that the scholars overseas can read our stuff? Or are we publishing so that our students, who don't necessarily read English all that well, can read what their lecturers are doing, can, so that their lecturers can build texts in Hebrew and in Arabic for the students to be able to use? Yeah, that's why we want you to publish. Not so you can impress your buddies at the conference when the corona is finally over and you can actually go travel to a conference and they go, great article in this publication that three and a half people read. Until recently, if you published in vernacular, in Hebrew or in Arabic, you had to publish three articles for it to be as important in your um, portfolio for promotion as one article in English. Now that they realize that that's not a smart thing to do, they now have to gather all of, the, all of the publications that people did in all these different languages. That means that people will have their name in possibly different forms. They might use one form of their name in English and a different form of their name in Hebrew and a different form of their name in Arabic. It's certainly different character sets. Where are they going to get the information that allow them to tie everything together in a neat little package so that they can export it into the promotion portfolios. The National Library of Israel's Israel National Authority database, it's got all the possibilities. Okay, so how do we link that? Well, we can add in the ORCID researcher identifier. 
but that means a lot of manual work. And then suddenly it hit people in Israel that we could use tools within Wikidata to pull out a list of all of the people who have a National Library of Israel ID statement and an ORCID statement. And then since we trust Wikidata, Wikidata has proved itself, proven itself trustworthy, we can just import all those 75,000 ORCIDs that are already linked to our authority record IDs, bring them all in in one fell swoop. In the course of an hour, boom, 75,000 records were enhanced. I mean, that's just mind blowing. Think how many librarians have to sit for how many years typing away to get that information in. And now what we're doing is the opposite. We're starting to look for Wikidata entities that have a National Library of Israel ID, but don't have an ORCID to see if we have it to contribute. Or the opposite, names that seem to us Israeli. We also started to rely when we can, when if it says that a person is Jewish, we will pull that and see if that's a person that's in our catalog since we are the National Library of Israel, but we're also the National Library of the Jewish people. And when we finish the Hebrew and, and Jewish side, we will then work on the Arabic and Islamic side to do the same thing because we're also the National Library of the Arab citizens and residents of Israel. Uh, the last project that we're working on is we work with digital humanities people to create authority records for their projects. We have, I suppose you could call it the Israeli version of Project Gutenberg, where volunteers sat and typed in the texts of classic Hebrew literature that are no longer subject to copyright. You want to have authoritative data to do exactly what any library catalog would do to be able to bring together the works of the same person, no matter how many different pen names he might have used and separate people who have the same name, but aren't the same person. So we've started to pull out lists of people who are, whose works are represented, represented in the Ben Yehuda project texts and to make sure we have authority data for them and that we can help the project disambiguate their people because they know that we have a link between the name and who the person is and we've already disambiguated and because we have mandatory deposit and we continue to collect Hebrew texts from all over the world, we should have all of the works that are represented in the Ben Yehuda project. So if we've associated a work with a specific person, they can rely on that and associate the work with that specific person. And the way that we've bridged between our database and their database is using Wikidata. So we keep looking at how many authors have both a Ben Yehuda author ID and a National Library of Israel ID, hoping that eventually we will get every author that's in the Ben Yehuda project to have it, both of the IDs, and then they can very reliably say, we know who it is, and we can attribute the proper works to the proper people. Because their texts, then digital humanity people can use their texts to do all of their different things, knowing that the attribution is correct, thanks to that bridge of National Library of Israel, Wikidata, Ben Yehuda. And we have lots of small little projects that use Ben Yehuda, that use Wikidata. The nice thing about Wikidata is it doesn't seem to have any sort of limits. Every project that we've started to do, that's become one of our integral components. Can we put Wikidata into this project? How can we? What can we add 
to the project by using Wikidata? What can we add to Wikidata by referencing this project? It's really become part of the baseline when we're considering how to build a project and how to budget the project, how to set the timeline for the project, that we will be incorporating Wikidata into the workflow of this project. It's just an amazing feeling to be part of something that in one sense feels like it's very young and fresh and doesn't have a lot of the negativity that in Israel is associated with the Wikipedia community. But on the other hand, because it relies on metadata and metadata is such a mature field, you feel like there is that maturity, that is, there is that history, and you know that things will continue and won't take a sudden left turn out of the screen because it has a solid foundation. So that is a wonderful balance that really makes it exci an exciting place to be. And I can't wait to see what the next project we're gonna start working on with Wikidata is, because I know it's just around the corner. And thank you for your attention. I hope you all work on Wikidata as much as you can because it's amazing. Thank you. I think that's so, uh, um, so many of these projects are so exciting. And I, of course, um, fully agree that, uh, I mean, I love Wikidata for its uh, space and the ability to, to try uh, different things. Um, so I have a couple of uh, questions. I'm going to just start with with one. But first, I wanted to to say how much I appreciated the way that you described some of this work in terms of of honoring and of being uh, being a guest. I think that those ways of of characterizing this work is so important. I know um, certainly for some of my work, I always think about it as uh, I think it is this idea of honoring. Um, you know, naming the, pe the way that people want to be called, but also relationships within the data. So I've, I've just been thinking recently about how relational metadata is. Um, encoding metadata is encoding a, a set of relationships and those, um, and very human relationships. And, it, and also recognizing that as, as humans, we have relationships to all kinds of things, not just each other, but to the places that we are, to uh, the places we create things in, to uh, time, and all of uh, Wikidata allows us to encode all of those relationships in a way that is very hard to do in the context of a Mark Authority record. And I think probably like you, I mean, my, my background is actually cataloging music, and I was always frustrated about all the things I might know about a recording and my inability to be able to, to um, encode those things in the, in the context of a bibliographic record or an authority record. And so Wikidata really allows us to, to um, actually put those relationships back. And in some ways that is sort of honoring the way that, that uh, those um, creations come into being. That it is also about looking back to, to those that have come before us who made this work possible. And also I think to the future to be able to sort of see all of those things in relation. So I really, appreciate that characterization. And I think also really important in doing work in this community is this idea of being a good, of being a good guest in that we are making sure that we're not uh, just coming and taking things and without bringing something back. So, so it's um, maybe it's like bringing a, a, a ho you know, most of them might call it a hostess gift or something. You are coming <laughs> and you're bringing something back with you to, to again, think about about in some ways also honoring the people who have done the work to create these these projects because so much of this work is is also done on a volunteer basis. I do have a question. This is, <laughs> this is a whole <laughs> bunch of comments. <laughs> but I really, as I said, appreciate that that thinking and also um, recognizing that there are a lot of ways, although Wikidata can seem intimidating in some ways because it's metadata, it's actually, uh, I think, quite quite friendly and being sort of low barrier to just thinking about adding a statement about something in the world. And in some ways that is a relatively, and each time we do that, we're building in these relationships, which is so important. 
So something that might be of interest to the community who are um, listening to this is that, you know, your library is doing so many interesting projects with Wikidata. How are you finding um, things like resources and training? And because we are trying to, to think about how we might support the wider professional library community in doing this work, what do you see as being missing from uh, perhaps training materials or things in the community that might be of use uh, to you and your work? Well, training, now you're, um, and I'm tra translating in my head from Hebrew, you're, you're basically stepping on my corns here. We were supposed to be having a whole course about writing in Wikipedia and contributing to Wikidata, which was supposed to happen in April and May. As you can understand, that did not happen. And we're waiting to hear when we'll be allowed to have that sort of course, because we feel it's the sort of course that it's better to do in person. At this point, we have mainly catalogers who are contributing to Wikidata, which goes super easy in terms of training because Wikidata is built the way we think. We're used, it's really not that hard to say, add in a Library of Congress authority ID instead of saying, add in a field 010. I mean, we just have to do the, the mapping and then it's so simple to teach a cataloger how to work in Wikidata. So we are working mainly at this point with the catalogers. Once we can do our courses, we'll then start training both Wikipedia editors and the general public. We've already started to build coursework. because It's actually, it's not that difficult. It's just a matter of changing the way you view it instead of saying oh well you need a piece of metadata that is what's the guy's first name okay great here's where you write it down what's the guy's last name here's where you write it down who's his father what does he do these are all questions that we ask all the time when we meet new people it's just a matter of teaching them how to start finding what the property is that goes with that information so the people that I've taught, as I say, so far it's been catalogers who think that way, but they get the idea really quickly. It's actually, I found it's easier to get someone to start making significant contributions into Wikidata than it is to teach them how to make significant contributions to Wikipedia. So we're ready to go up and running once Miss Corona here gets out of our country and out of the world. Um, in terms of, as I said before, we, start, we started to think about when we budget projects, adding in Wikipedia, wiki data time. A problem that we have at the National Library of Israel, which is also really to the benefit of Wikidata, is we are horrible when it comes to work-life balance. Even when we were on furlough, during Corona and we were not supposed to work. We had people who were working five to eight hours a day, not getting paid for it just because how can we not do this? So we were doing a lot of work in Wikidata also during that time period, because if you're gonna volunteer, you might as well volunteer in a volunteer project. So we have a lot of people who will work the full day in the library, make the little notes about what they want to put in Wikidata, go home and do Wik and then transfer all of that into Wikidata. But we're also exploring how we can automate more of things like the 75,000 records that we updated. So it's a real balance, which is the balance that we generally have in the National Library of Israel, relying on people who work very hard, very fast, people who volunteer their time after they come home from work, and the automatic processes that are basically run by one man, Professor Elchanan Adler, and let him go and run with it. Hopefully when the training comes, we'll have more people that will help us and then we can go even further and faster.
Okay. I think I'm unmuted. Okay. (laughs) The fun, the fun of online, uh, (laughs) online meetings. Um, No, thank you. Thank you for that. I think, uh, I think Kareem has a question. Same rookie mistake, I guess. <laughs> well, I, I was just uh, saying, if you could see my lips, I was thanking you, uh, our gratitude Ava, to you for sharing your time and expertise uh, with us. I want to, um, insp- I'm inspired by that. And uh, what I found very interesting um, and where I draw a relationship with your work is that uh, underlying all this hands-on work that you're doing, there's passion for uh, confronting the systemic biases that exist in Euro-American way of knowledge organization systems. And that's a passion f- of mine. And I know Stacy is interested in that too. Um, the questions um, that came to my mind, I guess there's one theoretical question and one practical. I'll just uh, use your expertise and put two questions forward and you can answer them as you choose. Okay. So my theoretical question coming from a traditional world is that, you know, when we talk about authority file, there's always this best practice or principle or golden rule about having one source of truth, right? Where you go and you get your information. From the way you're describing, it seems that Wikidata um, becomes a parking place where others go to synchronize data back and forth into their respective repositories. So, so I'm guessing is that principle, um, are we moving away from that golden rule and at a given time, uh, any of the uh, contributing authority databases could serve uh, um, as a single source of truth or, or they can't. Um, so we have we have, we have OCLC, the um, Wikidata uh, IDs and the local IDs or local catalogs. So where is the recent current data at any given time? Or is that notion now, um, uh, have you moved away from that notion? That's the theoretical question. The practical question now, uh, so if, if you, uh, it, it, it's hypothetical. Let's say Stacy or I, we want to create a Canadian authority file for Canadian authors, let's say. Um, are we better off creating a local database and then use Wikidata as, um, as a parking place and, uh, and, and a synchronization place to, to uh, leverage crowdsourcing? Or is there a model um, that Wikidata can be the only database uh, of authority? Uh, is that a possibility or, or do we lose control by just relying on Wikidata? Well, I'll answer your second question first. Before we okay. built the Israeli National Authority Database, we were looking at other solutions. It was just at the beginning of Wikidata, we had considered using VIAF as our, as our one authority database. And the main problem is that there aren't any library system vendors who will allow you to do that. So if you're trying to work in a traditional library environment, it's not a question of losing control. It's a question of how do you get that information in and out of your catalog if you're using Wikidata. If there were a library system that could use Wikidata as its source of authority control, then it would be a great possibility. But at this point, it's an ideal world, but basically, I mean, let's talk about the elephant in the room. If Ex Libris won't let you do it, it's not gonna get done. And Ex Libris, from my talks with them, they're 15 minutes down the road. Uh, They're not planning on doing that anytime soon, although they are talking about using Wikidata as part of their linked data solution that they're in the process of developing right now. So what we did was we create, we worked with Ex Libris to create the Israel National Authority Database, which works slightly different than any other authority database in the world. And it's the first one that's built to work natively in Alma's community zone. And then we work back and forth with Wikidata to help other projects and to help ourselves. In terms of the theoretical question, 
I don't think we can really talk about a single truth because let's take the, the most truthful thing we can say about a living person's name. The source should be that person, right? The amount of emails that I exchange with authors and here National Library of Israel is very weird because we reach out to authors all the time. I mean, I even called authors during the corona shutdown who we usually get books from on a regular basis saying, we haven't gotten anything from you in the last month or two. Are you okay? <laughs> Did you get sick? Are you just not feeling it? It's, it's all good, whatever it is. I just wanna make sure you're okay. And that's not something that most national libraries would do, calling a self-published author, but we did a lot of that. And we also contact living authors and say, one of your publications has this form of name, one has that, what do you prefer? The amount of replies that I get saying, I don't know. Well, is your name hyphenated or isn't it? I don't know, it depends on how I feel that day. You're married and you use both your name and your spouse's name. Do you want, are the both of them your last name? Is one of them your last name and the other one your middle name? How should I know? What do you mean, how should you know it's your name? What is your name? You would think that's the most obvious thing and that's the right person to ask. And they don't know it. If you can't trust the person to know what their own name is and what the parts, the elements in their name are. How can you trust Library of Congress to know it better than the, own, than the person themselves? How can you trust Wikidata or the National Library of Israel or the National Library of Wales or any other source of information? I've had people call me and say, you spelt my father's name wrong in the authority record. That's not how we spell our family name. And I'm like, that's how your father spelt it on all of his books. And we work a lot with authors. Excuse me. We work with the living authors very often to say, what is your form? And when they have a true answer, we consider that our one true source. A lot of our authority records have notes saying information from author, the date, how we got that information and what information they gave us. Beyond that, I wouldn't consider any authority database as truth. It's a snapshot of a limited section of the truth in a particular time frame. Whatever authority record I built today is the truth as I've had access to it on the 2nd of July, 2020. The truth that might change tomorrow. It might turn out that that person wasn't really a person. It, that person was someone else entirely. It may change, at, turn out that the person is writing and in Hebrew, which is a highly gendered language, uses feminine grammar on everything, but the person sitting behind the keyboard is a man, non-binary, whatever. I have no access to that truth. And I really am happy that we're getting to a point where there isn't a single source of truth, particularly a single source outside that own person or organization. Like Stacy and I were talking about earlier, we really try to honor the person's own requests. We're constantly changing things because the person has contacted us and said, no, we're one of the first people, when people get divorced or remarried, we're on their list. You know, you send out the wedding invitation and <laughs> during the week of celebrations, I'll call the National Library and have them change my name. Or, oh, I got divorced, let me call the National Library. We've gotten emails. You have, I got divorced three months ago and you still have my lousy ex-husband's name on my, last name on my authority record, please take it off. Fine, you know, happy divorce, glad if you, if it didn't work out, glad you're, not with him anymore, let me know what name you want. Mm -hmm. So if we can't, we never know the full truth, and I'm glad that we're getting to a point, especially that's linked data, in a linked data world where multiple viewpoints can coalesce because the more ways we look at something, the closer we might get to actually getting the truth and not just someone's biased view of the truth, and we're all biased. Mm -hmm. 
I love your answer. It's so humanistic, the way humans behave. And it seems that on both account, uh, the theoretical and practical, there's some external system constraints that condition us from living the way we should be, right? Um, so Wikidata and Wikimedia, it's a way of uh, relaxing those conditioning, hopefully in long term, we'll have enough pressure on those external biases or systems that restrain us from, from living fully humanistic in, in digital world as well. So thank you for those insightful um, answers. Um, so I think we're, we're at the end of the end of our time. And I want to say as somebody with a hyphenated theme and I, and I actually choose to, you know, use any three uh, last names depending on what I feel like. Uh, or what the use is during during my day to day uh, existence. I really appreciate that answer as well, and and also I think something that Wikidata has that is uh, really really helpful is being able to add provenance to to each statement, so we know where something is stated, but also where something is refuted. So being able to have that contextual piece again, those relationships. This is a statement. It's said here. But it's also refuted here, you know, again, lets us know that that metadata is not something that is immutable and that it is changeable and, and, and is relational and that is, uh, is human. So I think that that's um, a really wonderful way to, to end. And I want to also thank you for sharing your, your time and your expertise and your experiences. I think um, really valuable for, for us to, to hear about. So um, again, thank you. Best thank you wishes for, <laughs> for future projects. And um, certainly we will uh, look forward to hearing more in the future.